Ayan. So let us continue po the lectures po that uh, been uh, ano yan, end last meeting natin. No? So let me share now my screen. And good morning po ayan, sa mga scholar na nandito at saka sa mga nakikinig po sa ating recorded line. Ah, recorded line. Recorded lecture po natin. Ayan. So uh, let's continue our topic last uh, yesterday. Ayan. So we end up in the with the topic of four, uh, four three, yeah, which is uh, preparations of appetizers. And now we uh, already discussed the uh, what is uh, importance of presentation of appetizers and uh, <clears throat> the different okay types of appetizers that we can be able to perform during actual presentation. And then uh, we proceed also with dif uh, different examples of odor. Okay, and uh, also in the last meeting before that, our topic ng quarter three, we discussed the classical brigade, the persons, the father of modern, uh, modern cuisine, uh, uh, mothers, uh, ano pa ba yan? Yung mga basic cuts. Ah, yeah, yung cuts ang kulang na. Tama, yeah, we have that. Wala pa tayo, wala, wala pa pala tayong cuts. And we have the measurements, the vibrations of measurements, and also the... Uh, the last, uh, I mean yesterday, ano pa ba yung mga tinapik natin? Medyo madami-dami yung tinapik natin. Okay, so I think uh, doesn't have to recap everything na. Okay, uh, we will continue our topic that we end last uh, yesterday, which is the uh, the appetizer. Okay, the classifications of appetizers. Okay, ano ba yung mga classifications of appetizers natin? We have the, we have the, ano ba yung mga classification ng appetizers? Okay, we have a... Cocktails, observe. Okay, we have here the uh, canapé, ayan, canapé, and the uh, uh, religious or crudites. Okay, we have also the petit salad, okay, chips and chi uh, dips, uh, chips and dips, fresh fruits and vegetables, and also some finger foods. Okay, and we will proceed on the preparation of the canapé. Sa ating kasi sa scholar training po natin kasi, kailangan po natin i-perform yung canapé. So, ang canapé po natin is a, uh, this, uh, natin is, uh, um, definition is a bite-sized open face sandwich consists of tiny portions of food presented on, uh, on the on basis of bread. Okay, toast or pastry easily handled and it can be eaten or eaten. Okay, so canopy is a bread base. So, kapag magpa-perform tayo ng canopy natin, dapat meron tayong base, which is the bread. It's depend upon the types of bread that we are using. We can, be, we can have the French bread, okay, uh, the feta bread, uh, the tasty or the loaf bread, okay, mga crackers. So now, let's discuss the three parts of our canopy. Ano ba yung three parts ng canopy natin? The base, the spread or garnish, and I the, and then the I the spread or toppings. Then we have the garnish. So now let's have this uh, base. Okay, so base is uh, it holds. Okay, uh, uh, the spread and garnish or toppings. Okay, so we have sample like cracker toast are firm and give pleasing texture and crispiness to the canopy. Okay, so. When uh, ang importante sa ating bread base is kailangan a uh, firm. Pag sinabing firm, dapat matigas at can hold okay, our, uh, our canapé or which is the uh, toppings or the garnish we are using. Okay, especially kapag naglagay tayo ng spread. Okay, ano ba yung mga spread natin na ito? We will discuss. Okay, dapat kaya niyang i-hold yung moisture content niya. So, apa, uh, kapag, mag, kapag may naggagawa kayo ng canapé na gamit ang mga loaf bread, all you have to do is to toast. Okay, to toast the bread. Okay, either you put into the oven, the oven toaster, okay, uh, you pan grill the bread uh, using the butter and then you put the, the, the bread okay, on the pan. Okay, then pati yung kabila din, ganun din yung gagawin ninyo. Okay, so example natin ng mga bases natin that we have is the bread cutouts, toast cutouts, crackers, melba toast. Ito melba toast, yung alam niyo yung ano, alam niyo yung butter, butter biscuit ng ano, ng monde na pulay dilaw. 
Eh, mahilig ako dun nung, nung ano, nung pag dumadaan ako 7-Eleven, inapay na yun. Yung butter biscuits. Ayan, so that's Melba. Example yung Melba toast. Okay, tiny unsweetened pastry shells. Ito yung sa ginagamit natin sa mga tarts. Okay, we have your tort tortilla chips. Okay, tortilla chips dapat flat. Hindi dapat yung curve na nakikita natin sa ano. Nakikita natin sa uh, mga, mga ano yun, nachos. Hindi po ganun. Meron pong tortilla chips na flat po dapat siya. Okay, then if we have here the cups, biscuits. Okay, so we mold the, 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 the dough. Okay, into muffin pan and then you we put a uh, uh, spread or garnish on it or toppings on it. And then we have here the tiny biscuits. Okay, so uh, canapé okay, has also the spread. Okay, after the bread, uh, after the basis that we have uh, discussed, we have next we have the spread. Okay, spread, okay, place on the top of the base. So the garnish will stick to it without falling off. So the purpose of our spread is to hold our garnish or toppings na nilagay natin. Okay? Not just give the moisture but to hold. It it could uh, it will serve as a glue, okay? Uh to our garnish or toppings. So what are different example of our spread? We have here the flavored butter, okay? Spread, uh, we have here the flavored cream cheese. And we have here the uh, using the mayonnaise. Okay, so uh, either tuna, tuna, tuna mayo, maganyan, or kaya mga, mga pork. Okay, okay, beef. Okay, na pwede natin gamitin mixed with the mayonnaise. Okay, that could be our spread. Okay, the next one is the garnish. Okay, garnish. These are these are food items or combination of items placed on top of the spread. So ibig sabihin niya lagay yun sa ibabaw. Okay, ng ating uh, ng ating canapé para maging appetizing yung lasa or appetizing yung canapé na ipepresent natin. So that is the garnish. Okay, so example that we have the garnish from vegetables or pickles and radishes, we have here the radish slices, pickled onions, chutney, parley, par parsley, yana, parsley, <laughs> tomatoes, olives, pickles, asparagus tips, okay, cucumber slice, and pimiento. Okay, we have here a sample of fish that we can use as a garnish. Smoked fish, which is natin pa. Smoked salmon, shrimp. Caviar, which as we discussed uh, yesterday, yung uh, itlog ng uh, isda. Shrimp. Okay, tuna flakes. Okay, and sardines or lobster chunks or slice. For the meats that we can use in the canapé, we have a turkey, turkey meat, ham, salami, roast beef, chicken. Okay, so those are the different uh, garnish that we can use okay, in our canapé. Okay, pero pwede pa tayo maggamit ng egg, or like uh, boiled, hard boiled egg, yung quail egg, pwede natin siyang gamitin as toppings, mga ganyan. Okay, so next, guidelines for assembling the canopy. The good mise en place is essential in making canopy, especially for large functions. All bases, spreads, and garnish must be pre prepared ahead of time so that the final assembly may go quickly and smoothly. Okay, so uh, so sample natin ng ano, arrangement. Okay, arrangement ng canapes carefully should be attractive on a tray. Each tray should carry an assortment of flavor, textures. So there is something for very taste. Okay, so for every taste, not very taste. Okay, so Cocktails are made of seafood, fruits are usually with tart or tangy sauce. These appetizers are always served chilled. Okay, that's the requirement. Chilled. Okay, often on the bed of crushed ice. Sometimes kapag yung mga fresh, like yung mga uh, uh, sala, ay, not salami, ang tawag doon, yung mga cold cuts. Okay, like yung, uh, ano ba yung mga cold cuts na ginagamit natin, yung mga... Yung minakain na ako ng jelly jelly. Ano yan? Jellyfish na ano na pwedeng kainin. Yan. Tapos yung uh, 
yung mga meats, yan yung mga cold na hams, yan. Ginag- ano yan, uh, pinipresent siya on the top of ice. Yung mga fresh na ano, pang sashimi, like yung uh, geoduck, ayan, ginagamit yung sashimi. Okay, yung mga cold cuts na yan. So it's served as an appetizer on top of ice. Mga talaba, yan, talaba. Kinakain niya ng fresh. Okay, so they, they top in on uh, on the on the ice. Okay, so yun. Yan din yung ano, sample. Usually mga Chinese ang mga uh, kumakain ng ganyan. So sample natin that we had is shrimp cocktail, lobster, salad cocktail, fruit cocktail. Okay, I have here the salmon cocktail, meat, a uh, crab meat cocktail, and cocktail meatballs. Ayan. So, sample ng ating mga appetizers pa yan. Okay, so next we proceed with the religious. Okay, so okay na tayo sa canapé. So, oh, uh, the composition of uh, canapé, we have three parts. The base, the spread, okay, and then we have uh, the toppings or the garnish. Now we proceed on the religious. Okay, religious are samples is we have the raw vegetable with dips. Okay, so we can have, we can use the celery stalk, radish, green pepper, zucchini, cucumber, cauliflower, broccoli, and stems. These are raw vegetable. Hindi siya niluto. Okay, hindi siya binilanch. Okay, these are fresh vegetable that can be eat. Okay, uh, without any cooking method. Okay, all you have to do is to serve it with a dip. Okay, crude. Next, we have here the dips. Okay, accompaniment of raw vegetable are sometimes potato chips and crackers. And a mixture of spread can be used as dips. Proper consistency is important to any dip. Okay, what is proper consistency? Okay, alam niyo yung texture ng mayonnaise, dapat ganun yung texture, yung texture niya. Para sinabi niya, consistency. Meron ulit, ma'am. Thank you po. Okay, um, may alcohol sponsor po tayo. Okay, next we have here uh, the proper... Okay, so it must not be thick enough to stick to the items. The items use as dippers. Dapat ano siya, hindi dapat siya buong-buo kasi baka mamaya gumamit ka na mga thick nga. Kaya lang, yung tipong kapag tinaob mo na yung bowl, hulma na yung ano yung yung ano yung dips mo ibig sabihin super thick siya so dapat hindi siya ganoon dapat meron siyang consistency or meron siyang continuous in drips okay so we have here sample a picture ayan so sample natin ng mga dips yan like yung uh, salsa mga ganyan uh, tartar sauce alam mo yung, yung tartar sauce using the mayonnaise plus onion no We have here the garlic mayo. Those are dips. Okay. Uh, cheddar cheese. Okay. Yung mga melted cheese na, na pwede. Yung ano, cheese squeeze. Yan. Pwede po yung maging ano. Pwede po yung maging dips. Okay. Ng ating canapé. Ang ah, ating appetizer rather. Okay. The next one is the pickled items. Okay. In short, ito po yung mga binuburo. Like, like ng atsara. Okay, yung mga mangga, mangga na pinuro, mga fermented, mga ganyan. So, it includes variety of items like cucumber pickles, which is the, ano yung cucumber pickles? Yung pickles na ginagamit natin sa, ano, sa pagkain, yung mga caldereta, ganyan, may pickles yan. Okay, so yun po yun. Pwede yan. So, you can, you can use that also in the presentation of your food. Okay? Especially in the appetizer. Okay? So next, we go tayo with the range of appetizer. Okay? Prepare range of appetizer. So, the appetizer is required a, tempera a temperature. So, whether the temperature is uh, hot or the temperature is cold. If your appetizer is hot, you need to serve the appetizers in hot. Okay? Kapag ang appetizer is cold, you need to serve or present or prepare okay this kind of appetizer in cold and serve uh, in cold temperature and serve okay in in uh, cold tem uh, cold manner or cold temperature okay so hot or derb okay are served between the soup and fish course 
Okay? In today's shortened menus, they are often served instead of hot entree. Yeah. So the size of the richness depends on the composition of the menu. Many, uh, many hot hors d'oeuvres okay, are suited for serving small a la carte dishes. Pag sinabi natin a la carte, it's a kind of menu okay, that have a specific dish has a specific price. Okay, that's what you call a la carte. Okay, so for example, bumili ka ng uh, uh, burger yam. So that is sim that is burger yam lang. Ang tawag doon is a la carte kasi single order that has equivalent price. So single order, single price, that is an a la carte. So here, in uh, uh, yan, yung mga description ng mga menu, maano nyo rin yan, ma-encounter nyo rin yan, ma-encounter nyo rin yan dito. So in the service or the service of hot odor, okay, so the 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 menu is sometimes is a la carte. Okay, so you have the free, you have the choice, okay, to choose what kind of food that you're going to serve, uh, that, that you want to eat or consume. Okay, so part yan ng ating mga menu. Okay, next we have here the cold odor. Okay, it should stimulate the appetite. Okay, therefore, should always be served at the first course in the main item. Ang, hapan, ang hot order na natin, pwede natin siyang iserve between, okay, between, okay, the soup and the salad. Pero ang cold order daw natin, dapat sinaserve lang siya on first meal, okay, or before, okay, ng uh, soup or salad. Okay, kasi nga, dapat siya yung naging stimulate. So, cold order po siya. So, malamig siya, pero ang lasa niya, nakakapag-stimulate ng, ano, ng stomach. Yun na, gusto mo pang kumuha or gusto mo pang, mag, gusto mo pang kumain. Ganon dapat ang, ano, ang, ang, uh, ang uh, expectation natin sa paggawa ng order. Okay, kung parang kumakain ka and yet empty yung kinakain mo. Ibig sabihin, you are earning for more, more kinds of food. Okay, so we have here a sample of hors d'oeuvre or hors d'oeuvre that can be uh, served. Okay, we have here the plate hors d'oeuvre. Okay, so plate hors d'oeuvre. I, ano na, I highlight nga natin to. Okay, so plate hors d'oeuvre. Okay, may consist of shrimp, smoked beef, poached egg, Spanish sardines, lettuce. Sauce can be served on the side. We have here the Gerson platter. Okay, ay, mali, 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 mali. Okay. Gerson platter may consist of two kinds of cold meat, such as uh, such as ham, smoked beef, peppered peppered ham. Sauce can be served on the side. Then we have here the hors d'oeuvre platter. Okay, hors d'oeuvre platter as well as presented platter will be uh, with a limited choice of simple or more expensive food. Just we can use the caviar. Okay, the basic rule is small quantity but big quality. Okay, that is the basic rule. Okay, basic rule of our presentation in okay other small quantity but big quality. Okay, at the same time, attractively served may consist of shrimp with jelly, asparagus tips with mushrooms, sardines with onion rings, tomatoes stuffed with salad and chicken loaf. Okay, assorted other. Okay, assorted hors d'oeuvres, these are hors d'oeuvres. Ay, ano ba yan? No. Patay. Hindi, na-face na ko yung ano. Assorted hors d'oeuvres can be served with special portion platters with dishes or even more serving card. Okay, so assorted. Pag sabi assorted, it can serve hot or cold hors d'oeuvres. Okay, rich or derb. Ayan, so sabi natin, pag, sila, pag narinig natin yung word na rich, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is the process, not the expensiveness of ingredients. Ang pinag-uusapan dito is the process. Okay, how they this kind of food are prepared. Okay, so next we have here the, some, ayan, mga sample recipe natin. We have the blue cheese dip. Ayan. So we have that, okay, in the new elements, makikita nyo rin yan. Okay, then we have here the hummus, the hummus, ayan, hummus like chicken pea dip, ayan, chick pea dip. Ayan, so meron siyang, uh, meron siyang uh, chick, uh, chick peas, ayan, 
So para siya kabukado dressing no pero hindi siya bukado kasi gawa siya ng ano gawa siya ng uh, uh, green tea. Ayan, we have here the guacamole dip. Guacamole dip. Ayan, so we are ito, ito, na, ito na yung may avocado. Ay, wala akong picture ng guacamole. Okay, hindi ko na ng picture. Okay, we have here the avocado. Ayan, the guacamole dip. Okay, then we have here the prosquito. And may, ah, ayun yung ano mo. Saan to galing? Saan to galing picture? Hmm? Ah, dito siya sa Rumaki. Sorry, ah, nag, nag-jumble na yung ano, nag-jumble na yung mga, ayusin ko na lang ulit sa sana. Pero sa Neo niya, makikita niyo yan. Ayan, we have here the prosquito meatballs. Ito nakikita niyo sa side. Okay, this is the prosquito meatballs. Okay, it's a meatballs covered with gold meats or prosquito ham. Okay, we have here the Rumaki. Okay, ang Rumaki natin, ito yung Rumaki. Ito, nakikita nyo itong picture na itong gumagalaw. This is the Rumaki. Okay? So, para siyang, uh, para siyang, alam nyo yung binibili natin sa mga kwekwekan yung, ano tawag doon? Meatballs. Hindi siya meatballs eh. Vegetable balls. Kasi puro vegetable na naman lasa. Ano yan? Yung mga bilog-bilog na binibili natin ng piso-piso, para siyang, hindi siya squid ball eh. Uh, binubuo fish siya. Ball, ha? Fish ball, sir. Fish ball. Oh, parang fishball pero hindi siya yung fishball na puti na nakikita natin na parang saucer na maliliit. Yung binubuo pa siya ng dalawang kutsara tapos dinidip. Tama ba? Tama, tama ba yun? Yung parang meatballs siya pero hindi siya meatballs. <laughs> yung puro harina na may, may extra. Parang sa... bola sir tawag yun. Ano mang dayan? Bola bola. Bola bola. Ayun, yung bola bola. <laughs> yung gulay na bola bola yung ganyan. So example po yan ng rumaki natin. Okay, so that's my sauce. Okay, we have here the chicken satay. This is my favorite. Actually, yung pinaka-favorite ko dito sa satay is lamb. Uh, lamb satay. Pero chicken satay may be good. Pero ang pa- ang medyo pangit lang na lasa ng, ano, ng beef. Matapang kasi masyado yung baka. Pero yung chicken satay, okay yan. At saka yung lamb satay. Mahal nga lang yung lamb. Kasi nga, to pa yan eh. Okay, pero okay yan. Good siya. Okay. Uh, ang satay, the typical, okay, ang satay kasi is a Chinese term. Okay, Chinese term po ang satay. So, ibig sabihin ng satay, grilled, okay, meats. Okay, grilled marinated meats. That's the satay. Okay, pero sa atin, sanay tayo ng barbecue. Okay, yan, barbecue. Okay, yan yung katapat ng satay, barbecue. Which is, ang barbecue, nakuha naman natin siya sa English. Okay, sa mga American people natin yan. English term naman kasi ang barbecue. Pag uh, 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 Chinese satay naman ang tawag sa kanila. Ah, ganyan. Okay, so we have here the ingredients of chicken satay. You can use that. Okay, you can uh, tawag nito. I-present yan pag meron kayong mga events or meron kayong mga gathering or family api, family uh, Uh, dinner, mga ganyan. So you can present that chicken satay. You can screenshot the recipe and then uh, pwede nyo siyang gamitin. Okay, this is the recipe that I get here. It came from the book that we are uh, using okay, in uh, international cuisine. Yeah, this is the this is goods. Okay po ito. Okay, next we have uh, din pa bang recipe natin? Ayan, pros- uh, prosquito. Okay, devil eggs. Yan. Devil eggs, yan yung commonly pinaprepare namin kapag sa cold appetizer. Eh, devil eggs. Ang gagawin nyo lang dyan is you simply boil the egg. Okay? You get the egg yolk and then you mix the egg yolk with mayonnaise. Okay? Plus the mustard, Worcestershire sauce, mga ganyan. So, and then, ibabalik nyo ulit sa egg. Di ba tinanggalan nyo yung, tinanggal nyo yung egg yolk, no? Nandun yung egg, egg white shell. So, ibabalik nyo ulit siya dun sa pinagtanggalan nyo ng egg yolk. Pero may design na siya. Okay, that's what you call devil eggs. It's one of the example niya ng cold dessert na. We have your bruschetta. Okay? Bruschetta basics. Ayan. So, we have your sample. And we have the dates. Dates. Ito po yung uh, uh, sa mga Dubai. Yung mga, kam- mga kamag-anak natin or family member na nasa east mga east asian ka ah, nasa east nasa west asian countries like Kuwait or mga dry mga dry places Dubai, Qatar, 
Okay, mga turkey, yan. So, dyan po yan galing, yung dates na yan. So, ang dates with gorgonz uh, gorgonzola is just only stop with gorgonzola cheese. Okay, you have the dates and then you stop it with gorgonzola cheese. Medyo mahay ka, mahalan po ito kasi ang dates natin ngayon ang mahal. Ang mahal ng dates na yan. Uh, sa, sa kapag dumating yung dates dito, ano na siya, yung uh, maraming sugar na, yung nakabalot na lang siya ng ano, na matamis na. Ito kasi ang, ang dates kasi nila dito, fresh. Yes. Pag okay. fresh, sir, hindi pa masyadong hinog, hindi yan matamis. O, oh, diba? Yan. So, yun yung ano. Yun yung... Ma'am Ma Juliet, nakapag ano na ba kayo? Nakapag uh, ibang bansa na ba kayo? Sinti na nakapag ibang bansa na tapos sa Katkin yes. yung ano? Y yes, sir. Uh, residence ako sa Bahrain. Yes, oh, sa Dubai. Yeah. So, okay. meron ako niyan. Sa grocery lang nabibili yan doon. Mura lang yan. 100 pesos lang per kilo. Diba po yung ano? Yung depende mata kung... Depende pa yan kung hindi pa hinog, may hinog pa, at hinog na hinog. So, pag nahihinog siya, mas tumatamis na siya. Opo. Oh, Ay, hindi ko alam. <laughs> Ay, di pumasok siya. Mag-enter lang siya. Mm -hmm. Baka ibang link naman ang sinan mo sa kanya. I-check mo nga double check mo yung link mo. Sorry po. <laughs> na, 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 this, na. Kasi po yung ko oh, teacher ko kasi. <laughs> Hindi na kasi makapasin mo. Marami din sila, sir, na ibang luto dyan eh. Yung mga native doon. Yan oh, talaga oh. Ang, ang, ang appetizer nila. Plan na pag Ramadan. Yan muna unang kinakain before sila yeah. mag-main meal. So, maraming luto yan, iba-ibang klase. Di ba, ma'am? Depende yeah. sa ano, yeah, oh, masarap. Oo. Oh, oh. Eh di, isend mo yung link mo doon. Isend mo, nasend mo ulit sa kanya dito. Isend mo doon para makapasok siya. <laughs> yung mga technical terms kasi, pagdating sa Zoom, kung di makapasok sa Zoom, eh di, huwag na pumasok, di ba? Char. <laughs> Pakinig na lang na recorded. Anyway, so... Let's uh, have additional. Ito yung ano, yung basic methods natin. Okay, na discuss ko yesterday. This is next. Ayan, yung mga detailed na. Ayan, lumabas na siya dito sa ating uh, CBLM ng, uh, ng ating appetizer. Which as you can see it, okay, in our CBLM. Yung mga moist heat method, yung dry heat method, yan. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so next we go tayo with, may nakita pa ako dito isa pa yun. Dapat natin pag-usapan. Ayan. Okay, presentation of appetizer. Yeah. Techniques. Okay, fundamental on plating. What do we need to, to have? Okay, number one is balance. Okay, how do we balance? Okay, our dish. Number one is the number. Okay, or the volume of our appetizer. So, kung titingin ka sa isang plato, kung ano yung nasa kaliwa, dapat nasa kanan din. Okay? That's what you call balance. Okay? So, equal, that's the number one rule sa balance natin, yung count o yung number. Okay? The second is the color. Okay? Kung ano yung kulay, okay, dun sa kabila, dapat yung kulay din sa kabila. Okay? Para, para masabi natin siyang balance. Okay? At the same time, uh, it, you need to put a... Uh, a contrast color okay that complements or suit okay to other uh, dish okay for example like you you place here in the picture you put an orange then maglagay kayo dito ng red or kaya ng green okay nas meron ditong orange then doon sa may kabilang meat so this is an example of a platter okay of an appetizer mix na siya meron na siyang cocktails meron na siyang uh, kind ng odor, tapos yung green olives, no? nakikita nyo, kakainin din siya, okay, with pistachio nuts, then you have the crackers, okay, para, para din siya to train na, ano, na an example din natin na karaan. Okay, then we have here the shapes. Siyempre, kung, kung may triangle sa kabila, dapat may triangle din sa kabila. Kung may square, may square din sa kabila. Okay, tapos yung, uh, uh, yung size niya, hindi dapat masyadong malaki. Okay, next, texture. Okay, texture is not strictly visual consideration but important in plating in menu planning. Kasi kung ano yung texture kasi ng pagkain nilalagay natin, we will uh, 
analyze that this food could mess our plate. Okay, kapag nakita nyo sa isang sa plating ninyo is may sauce siya, alam nyo na na nagdidrip siya sa mismong plate. So possible, pwede, pwede siyang makapag-create ng distraction sa ibang mga food items ninyo. Kaya always think about the texture ng output ng pagkain. Okay, so lalo pag may sauce, may sabaw, okay, kung dry, lahat yun magkakasama yung dry. Kung may sauce, dapat magkakasama yung may sauce. Okay? Ganun po yung tinatawag nating texture kasi it will affect kasi the overall presentation okay ng, ng ating appetizer. Next is the flavor. Okay? Dapat may ano may pagkakaiba yung isang pagkain sa isang pagkain. Hindi kaya alam yon, yung tipong may nakita kang pagkain na magkakaiba yung kulay, magkakaiba yung design pero pag dinikman mo, pare-parehas yung lasa. Okay, so Diba? Kasi nilagyan lang ng food color, nilagyan lang ng, uh, nilagyan lang ng ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Pero pag tinikman mo, almost the same siya ng pagkakalasa niya. So dapat may variety of flavors. So pag prepare niyo po sa akin na sa amin dito ng canapay, dapat magkakaiba yung topping. So magkakaiba dapat yung magiging lasa niya. Okay? So next, portion size. Okay? So napaka-importante po ng portion size. Number one sa costing. Siyempre, kapag mas maliit yung kung costing mo, maliit din yung pang-press pang, pang, pang mo doon. Okay? Tapos you can have the the good, uh, tawag nito, you will have the good costing pagdating sa mga maliit na pagkain na pwede mo siyang itap into high price. Mga ganyan. Okay? So another is the march the portion size of the plate. Okay, so siyempre kapag once na alam mo yung plato mo is maliit, do not put pa food that is bigger than the plate. Okay, always think of it. Okay, kung alam mo na, na malaki yung pagkain o kaya naman ang laki-laki ng plato mo, ang liit-liit naman ang serving mo, you need to think of it. Okay, so para mak makuha niyo yung tamang plating natin or presentation ng ating pagkain, especially with the appetizer. Ang appetizer po yan, bite size lang yan. So you don't need to look for a plate bigger than the dinner plate. Kasi pag nangyari yun, lalamunin ng plato yung, yung canapay ninyo. Pangit yung magiging, ano, niya, magiging, magiging kulay niya. Unless you will do the plating. Ibig sabihin, you will create an art on the plate and then you put your different canapay. Okay? So that our appetizer. Okay? Nakuha po ba? Next, we have here the arrangement of the plate. Okay, so arrangement of the plate, that is the basic, okay? Basic arrangement po yun ang presentation natin. So what are three elements of, uh, three elements in arrangement of the plate? Number one, you need to create the centerpiece. What will be the centerpiece of your plate? Or what will be the center attraction of the food you prepared? Okay, that's the number one element. The second element is the type, the size, Okay, that you create, uh, that you do in a different appetizer. Dapat appropriate yung mga cuts niya, yung slices niya doon sa overall presentation. Okay, ng ating uh, uh, platter o kaya ng arrangement ng ating uh, uh, hors d'oeuvre or kaya uh, appetizers. Then the third one, the garnish should be artistically done. Okay, do not just simply put or ping, 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 ping lang yung mga garnish niyo. No. You need to think about the garnish. How would how would it be done? For example, pakita ko sa inyo sample dito ng shrimp. Inoob niya yung shrimp and then naggawa siya ng guacamole or gram gramolata at I think I think this is a gramolata top. Tinan niya yung shrimp ko, oh, ginawa niya yung butterfly tas ginanon niya. Okay, then they put butter and then parsley. They they he doesn't just put the parsley on the top of the shrimp. Okay, kundi naglagay siya ng butter, naglagay naglagay po siya ng cream. Okay, para kumapit yung ano, yung kulay green. Okay, hindi ba pansin niyo ayan no? Pinag-isipan yung kailangang mga garnishes. Ito, as you think of this one, 'di ba? Uh, we have here the as ano ba yung ano ko? Ano te? Ayan no, pag hindi ito, ito, ito this one is the base. Okay, tapos ito, meron siyang patong-patong na na ham or kaya salami ata to or salmon. Then they put the garnish on it. Pero yung garnish na hindi lang basta pinatong lang na parsley. Gumawa siya ng mixture. Okay na pwede, pwede niyang uh, in-enhance. Okay dito, meron siya ditong uh, canopy tapos meron siyang black sesame. Ibig sabihin, tinoast niya yung sesame seed. Okay, naging black sesame. 
Okay, nakuha po ba? So that's how you prepare your ano, your appetizer. Okay, hindi lang basta nagprito lang kayo tapos kinat ninyo. Then that it, that's it. Overall okay na 'yan. Hindi. Dapat gumagawa tayo ng mga uh, difficulty na tinatawag natin kumbaga sa cooking difficulty because pinag-iisipan natin yung mga dishes na ginagawa natin. Okay? So that will be for our designing ano yan, arrangement. Okay, arrangement on the plate. Centerpiece, cuts, and garnish. Okay? Dapat alam natin yung mga ganong bagay. Okay, another natin. Uh, meron pa ba dito? Okay, sanitation workplace. We are done this. Done this, done. Okay, so... Ano po yan? Sa lahat ng CBLM po lagi natin, lahat ng CBLM natin lagi may ano yan. May ano siya. May ano siya. Tawag dito may core one. Pasok lagi yung core one. Aha. Uh -huh. Ano to? Bakit nakasama ang mga daily? Okay. Cheese. Ayan. Cheese variety and storing and handling. Ayan. Daily products. These daily products, those are Uh, example of milk and cream. Okay, so we have here the how to prepare, I mean, preparations of the milk or cream through the pasture, uh, pasteurization. Okay, pag sinabi ng pasteurization, this is being pasteurized or being cooked, okay, with the specific temperature in order for them to create a pasteurized. Kung baga parang sa atin, uh, sa egg, how do we pasteurize the egg? Dapat the egg, we need to cook the egg for about uh, 50 okay, degrees Celsius or for about 135, if I'm not mistaken, 35 to 120 degree Fahrenheit. This is the, this is the, ano, the pasteurization is the process for killing the bacteria for a specific temperature. So, ibig sabihin, The, the milk or the egg will now save for consuming okay the i mean for consumption okay hindi alam niyo yung mga kumakain ng sariwang itlog okay yung mga di pa galing sa palengke fresh yung egg tapos biglang kinain okay there are instances kasi na meron meron siyang virus kahit fresh egg yan okay pwede siyang mag uh, meron na siyang uh, present na doon yung tinatawag nating salmonella virus natin. So, how to remove that kind of uh, virus is we need to cook the item in a specific kind of temperature. Okay? Yung, uh, yung cooking or uh, tawag ito, pasteurization natin okay, sa milk using the machine. Okay? Sa atin, as a basic natin dito sa kusina, we can pasteurize the egg. How do we pasteurize the egg? Okay? We need to boil the egg. Uh, not, actually, not to boil eh. Okay? We need Uh, the egg, we need to dip the egg in uh, hot water, not boiling water kasi pag boiling water yan, it will start to cook the egg. Okay? We, uh, for about three minutes, for example, alam niyo yung pag nagluto kayo ng ano, uh, ng pasit kanton, di ba meron dong scalp temperature? Pag sabi ng scalp temperature, ito yung mga maliliit na bubbles sa ilalim ng kaldero. Bago sa kumulo, tama po ba? Nakita niyo na po ba yung ganon? Yung mga bubbles, akala nyo mga Sprite, yung parang bubbles ng Sprite sa bottom part ng kaserola yes. o kaldero. Okay, that's what you call uh, skull temperature. Okay, kapag uh, nakita nyo na yon you just simply put the egg there and turn off. Okay, turn off lang ha. Turn off the, uh, turn off the, the lights, char. Turn off the stove. Okay, then we need to stay that the egg. Okay, for about three minutes to pasteurize. Ibig sabihin, to kill the bacteria. Okay, that's, that, that's, the, that's the simple explanation of pasteurization. Killing the bacteria. Okay, next. Okay, ano pa daily products natin? We have here the... Do you know where we're going to? Asa na tayo? Ba't nawawala? Ayan. Ano ba mga type of cheese natin? Ay, mga dairy products natin. Okay, start tayo with the milk. Okay, we have different type of milk, no? Number one, we have here the whole milk. Whole milk. Whole milk. Okay, whole milk is a fresh milk that has come from the cow. It's nothing to be, to be removed or nothing to 
uh, and nothing to be added. Okay, except to uh, except vitamin D. Okay. Ayan. So that is the those are the fresh milk. Those are direct milk came from cow. Okay, those are fresh milks. Okay. So kapag once na nag-contain siya for about 3.5% fats known as the milk fat or butter fat, okay, so 8.5% non-fat uh, milk solid and 88% uh, water. Okay, so sa fresh milk natin kasi, sa pinag-uusapan sa fresh milk kasi meron yung tinatawag nating fat content. Okay, kasi yung mga milk na kinakuha natin sa kalabaw or baka, okay, or sa, tama, doon sa kanila, okay, may mga fast content po yan. Di ba minsan nakikita nyo yung supermarket, merong fresh milk, may low-fat milk, may ganitong klaseng milk, di ba may uh, other type of milk. So may mga ano yan, may mga percentage siya ng fats. At the same time, may mga ano siya, may, may composition siya ng gan para ng milk. Okay. Okay. Ano nangyari, Ma'am Zubilin? Okay. So next we have here another type of milk product natin. We have the skim or non-fat milk. Okay. So skim milk has uh, the most of all fat are being removed. Its fat content is 0.5% or less. And the remaining is water. We have here the low-fat milk. Low-fat milk has a fat content for about 0.5 to 2%. Okay. Okay. Basta ang importante natin dito, alam natin yung mga gatas. No need to, alam mo yun, hindi naman tayo nutritionist para alamin yung mga nutrition facts or percentage of fat. Ang importante sa atin dito is whatever we consume in the milk, always uh, look about the fat percentage. Kasi the more fat percentage ang ating milk kasi, the more na mas maraming, uh, alam mo yun, no? ibibigay, ibibigay sa ating uh, fat. Alam mo yun, pag kinosyam natin sa katawan natin. Kaya di ba minsan merong mga gatas daw na hindi uh, nadidissolve, okay? nadidilute ng ating katawan kasi too much na yung fat na nakalagay doon sa gatas na iniinom natin. Usually ang gatas po talaga iniinom siya dapat umaga para ma-burn po yung fat okay, na nakain natin through drinking milk. Okay, kaya umaga po dapat tayo umiinom ng gatas, hindi sa gabi. Kasi sa gabi kasi, hindi gano'n nag, 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 uh, nag-metabolize yung ating katawan kapag gabi. So, hindi niya mabibreakdown yung uh, particles into, uh, into dundrians that we need. Okay, at the same time, magiging stored fat siya. Pag naging stored fat siya, yun yung tinatawag natin mga visceral, vis visceral fats. Okay, yun yung mga stored fats natin. Yung visceral fats po kasi those are fat uh, covered our internal organs. Okay, so ang ano lang yan, mga uh, very light lang. Pero importante, dapat alam natin yung pagkakaiba ng milk. Hindi uh, hindi lang basta, okay, bumili ka ng milk. At yung ano pong klase ng milk? Ayan, <laughs> ba? Diba? Kasi marami, marami tayong iba't ibang klase ng milk. Meron tayong wool milk, skim, low fat, fortified. What do you mean by fortified milk? These are kind of milk that is added or adds vitamins. Kaya tinatawag siyang fortified. Okay? Fortified milk, this is from the common milk na nabibili natin na fresh milk, nag-add pa siya ng mga vitamins okay, na nilagay nila okay, doon sa milk natin. Kaya kung makakita kayo ng milk that is fortified, that is good po. Okay, good po yan. Kasi nag a sila ng mga additional vitamins. Kaya minsan makapapansin nyo, mas mahalang fortified milk. Kasi nagdagdag sila ng vitamins for it. Okay, flavor milks. Okay, like a chocolate milk. Okay, ano pa ba yan? Ayan, so that will be for different lang siya. Meron ba tayong milk? Actually, hindi. Ang iba po hindi po siya gatas. Ha? <laughs> ang iba po hindi po siya gatas. Ang iba is... Ano na? Medalyon sa kadomain. Nasa yung doon yung picture. Ay, sabi ko hindi lang pwede ko. Sabi mo yung nasa yung nagawa. Ito ma'am, i-check mo na ito. Autonics pa. Ay, autonics pa na. Ano mo ito? Kaya lang po lang. Oo. Sabi mo ma'am po lang na lang. Sabi mo nasa yung nagawa. Sabi ko magdala sa nalang bago. Picture eh. Ayan. So... Yan po, yung ating, ang iba po, hindi po siya 
uh, milk kasi evapo is evaporated milk. Ibig sabihin, tinanggal, pinarasas na po yung ating evap. So evaporated milk, it means that the, the milk are being boiled. Okay? So nung binoiled po yung ating milk, yung nag-evap, o yung, o yung mga nag-evaporate na milk na puto sa ibang tube, yun na yung milk. Okay? Na, uh, tawag ito? Tinanggal nila yung moisture content. Okay? Ng, ano, ng milk. Kaya pansin nyo, pag titikman nyo yung iba, tapos titikman nyo yung fresh milk, iba yung lasa ng evaporated milk compared sa fresh milk natin. Okay? Uh, sir, meron bang, may, 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 ano ba? may possibility ba na yung evaporated milk is maging fresh milk? Yes. There is a process of evaporated milk to, to, uh, to become a fresh milk. Uh, you need to add a water, okay, distilled water. You need to add a distilled water with the same amount okay, of the evaporated milk. For example, if the evaporated milk is 300 ml, you need to add 300 ml of distilled water to make the evaporated milk become a fresh milk. Okay? So, pwede na po siya for consumption. Okay? So, alternative po natin yun pag nawalan tayo ng whole milk tapos na ano, tapos meron kang maraming iba or meron kang iba. So that could be the alternative. Okay? So take now, uh, notes niyo po yung ganun. That's uh, what you call uh, ano, not alteration is substitute ang tawag po na. Okay, next, we have here the cream. Okay, part yan ng dairy products natin, the cream. We have here the whipped cream, light cream, and half and half. Okay, pag sinabi natin whipped cream, okay, these are cream that ha that is high in fat content. Ibig sabihin, mataas yung kanyang fats. Kasi through the high fat, okay, the whipped cream become an icing. When we mix using our whipping, uh, whipping method like a uh, wire whisk or kaya, uh, ano to? Ano yan? <laughs> yung mixer, ng hand mixer. Okay? Mga ganyan. So, Kaya nagiging icing po siya ang whipped cream natin. It's, it's, it's good for the dessert. Okay, light cream. Light cream, ito yung ginagamit natin na mga low-fat cream. May sabihin sabihin, cream siya, lasang cream, kaya lang hindi siya ganun kataas yung fat content. Okay, the next one is the half and half. Ito yung ginagamit natin all-purpose cream na Magnolia, Nestle, or Alaska, which is the half and half. Okay, ayun ang tawag, tawag po doon is all-purpose cream. Okay, so that is half and half. Okay, next, another natin is mga fermented milk or cream products. Ito naman yung inimbak. Okay, fermented. Okay, ano yung mga example natin ng mga fermented na mga uh, cream or milk products natin? Yogurt. Okay, so it's an example ng pasteurized or fermented uh, milk. Okay. We have here the buttermilk. Okay, mga fermented po yan. Cream, fre uh, cream fresh. Okay, so example yan ng mga ano, fermented. Sour cream. Ayan, sour cream is fermented kasi ano yan, ah, binulok mo lang yung ano, gatas kaya medyo maasim-asim po yung sour cream. But it's good for consumption. Kasi nga, mga pasteurized na sila. Okay, we, and uh, we have here the condensed milk. Ang condensed, mahirap po natin siyang gawing fresh milk kasi ang condensed milk kasi, they add sugar. They add sugar. So, mahirap po natin tanggalin yung sugar doon sa condensed milk. Ito na naman, may magugula na naman. Okay, then, yan yung, yan, mahirap po, i, ano, mahirap i, gawin pong fresh milk ang condensed kasi may tubig, ano siya, concentrated po siya ng sugar. Okay, next we have here the dried whole milk. Ito yung mga powdered milk na ginagamit natin. Okay. Another natin we have here, a problems cooking milk and cream products. Ito yung mga problems na. Okay. Ano mga problems natin ng ano, pag, uh, paggagamit natin ng mga uh, gatas kapag number one na overcook. Okay. Na, nagkakaroon siya ng curdling. Okay. Yung katawag natin buo-buo. Diba? Try nyo pong, hindi ko alam kung na-encounter nyo ito na nalagay kayo ng Nestle cream. 
Okay, sa isang uh, sa isang pagkain tapos hindi niya pa pala siya hangwe. Ang, ang paglalagay po ng cream, laging huling-huli po siya nilalagay. Okay, hindi po siya pwedeng ilagay before ilagay mo yung mga meats kasi mamumuo po siya. Pag namuo sa curdling po yung tawag doon. Okay, and ano ano magiging effect niya sa pagkain? Pangit po yung magiging pagkain kasi para may, para siyang may buo-buong panis na gata sa gilid. Pero okay yung lasa. Wala tayong problema sa lasa kasi okay yan eh. Kaya lang yung presentation hindi ganun kaganda. Okay, or hindi talaga maganda kasi nga may buo-buong cream. Okay, number one is scorching. Okay, scorching is a course when the milk that is being heated coagulates on the bottom of the pot of the pan due to high heat. Ito po yung nasunog na gatas. Okay, nasa bottom part. Scorching naman po ang tawag. Uh, next, we have here the butter. Okay, let's understand what's, uh, what's the life of the butter. Okay, butter characterized uh, characterization and grades. Number one, we have here uh, the unsalted butter, clarified butter, and salted butter is a common, the common butter is salted butter because they add salt on it. Okay, unsalted is removing the salt in the butter. Okay, clarified is removing the impurities of the butter. Okay, so an example ka na rin yan sa inyo na nakaraan. Okay, storing. Okay, meron tayong storing, no? Okay, kapag bumili pa tayo ng butter sa sa supermarket, ayan, dapat ilalagay po natin siya sa container na lagay ng butter container. Okay, hindi yung ini-stain nyo lang sa balot na papel or kaya na foil ng butter. Okay, kapag buwan sa bil, dapat yan inilipat ninyo. Tapos doon nyo siya kukuhanin sa lalagayan niya. Kasi kapag doon po kasi minintain sa sa lagayan na ganun like yung sa foil or plastic kasi it will ano kasi it will affect the the quality of the butter minsan lasang karton amoy karton kasi yun yung kanyang palot okay ganun din po sa gatas kapag once na nagbukas tayo ng gatas especially sa iba or mga can uh, milk natin we need to transfer it into a, another container okay para yung kanyang uh, Uh, zinc or yung kanyang uh, metal component hindi po matouch doon sa uh, sa lata. Ganun po yung mga canned goods natin no. Pag once na may canned goods tayong pagkain at binuksan natin siya, tapos ilalagay mo sa ref, huwag niyo pong gagawin 'yon. Kasi iisi uh, kasi yung chemical components nung lata mapupunta po sa pagkain at magiging hazard po siya sa ating consumption. Okay, ano ano po ba yung mga ano po ba yung mga bakterya na present sa can kapag uh, kapag dented, kapag uh, open, okay? Yung botulism. So it will it will gives ano uh, uh, sakit sa chan or kaya even diarrhea or kaya hospitalization. Okay, kaya yung, ano po 'yun? Kaya yung mga packaging natin after po natin bilhin sa supermarket, ilipat po natin sa mga containers. Okay? Another natin, margarine. Ayan, so you can see is star. May nakalagay pong fortified. Fortified means added vitamins. Kasi alam naman natin ang margarine is created from a vegetable fat. So ang nutrients niya, wala. Okay, so fat lang siya. So para maging mas kapakipanginabang ang, ang margarine, they add vitamins. Kaya nakalagay dyan, fortified. Okay, so pag ganun po, pag nakalagay na fortified, added, may added vitamins po siya. So ngayon, okay po yung star, margarine. Okay, okay yan kasi may mga vitamins added. Alala ko na naman yung mainit na kanin, tapos nalagyan mo ng star margarine, alala ko yung lola ko. Ayan. So yan po, ganun, 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 binibigyan niya ako ng ganun dati. Bibili siya ng ganyan, tapos nalagyan niya sa kanin. Anyway, so next we have tayo with the cheese. Okay, so we have here different we we have different type of cheese. Okay, so cheese is a food produced by separating milk solid from when curdling or coagulation. Pag namumuo, pag namumuo na siya, yung bubu na yun yung milk na yun. Hindi na siya ano? Hindi na siya milk. Magiging cheese na siya. Okay, so the cheese are created through what? Ripening age ah uh, ripening. Pag sinabi natin yung ripening. Those are aging. Okay, that is fermenting. Okay, the other term for ripening. 
Okay, so it means that you need to have a different kind of bacteria, okay, to re to rip, okay, your cheese. Okay, di ba kung mapapansin niyo sa mga European countries, yung mga gumagawa ng cheese, ayan. Uh, para ma-create po iba't ibang klaseng cheese, dumadaan po yan sa fermentation or pagkabulok. Okay, bago siya maging kapaki-pakinabang. Sample ng ano, ng bulok-bulok na keso pero kinakain ng tao. Blue cheese. Okay, ang blue cheese po, kung bakit po meron siyang blue, 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 okay, it's because of the worm, okay, present in the cheese that eaten or eat, eat, the, eat, eat the nutrients and eat the other bacteria. Okay, kaya pag kumain kayo ng blue cheese, maasim at saka parang medyo smelly siya, pero goods siya. Okay, pag bumili din kayo ng cream ng ng, cheese, ng blue cheese, mabaho 'yan. Oo, mabaho na maasim. Kasi those are fermented cheese. Okay? So, ang cheese nakikreate siya, iba't ibang klase ng cheese, meron tayong soft cheese at saka meron tayong hard cheese. Yung queso de bola is example po siya ng hard cheese. Okay, ang mga kesong puti o kaya yung mga nabibili niyo sa supermarket na bilog na cheese tapos pag binuksan niyo merong parang pizza na triangle triangle, ang tawag doon mga soft ripen cheese. Ibig sabihin mga cheese na saglit lang pinermen. Okay? So next we have here, ayan, the tawag nating unripen cheese. We have the cottage, ricotta, cream cheese, uh new fache, we have the mozzarella and mozzarella di bufala. Okay, so sample natin yun ng mga unripened cheese. And we have here the soft ripened cheese. We have the brie or and cambret. Okay, we have the explator, brilliant savarine, St. Andre, Borsal. And we have here the Borsin. Okay, we have also the cha, cha, charse. <laughs> okay, similar texture with the appearance of double cream cheese. We have the uh, lie de crust, lie, lie der crust. Okay, we have the Epossier. Okay, which is the Burgundy France, from the Burgundy France. Diba ang dami mga cheese? Okay, next we go tayo with the hard cheese. Okay, we have here the cheddar, which is the queso de bola yung ginagamit natin dyan. Okay, we have here the elementar. Ang elementar po mapakla. Kasi ginagamit namin yun sa dati sa canapé namin yung element, elementar. Elementalar. Or elemental. Mapakla po yan, pero... Last ang keso, pero mapakala. <laughs> okay. We have here the gure, uh, gruye, gruye, gruye. Okay. We, we, have, we have here the adam and goda. Goda cheese, ma, ma tigas po yan. And we have here the provolone. Okay. Medyo may kamahalan po yung mga cheese na yan. No? So storage po ng ating mga uh, cheese or kaya mga spread po natin. Okay. Always store in a cold temperature to make their life longer. And if kung, if kung kaya niyo siyang isealed, okay, much better. Okay, para hindi po madapuan ng, uh, ng flies or kaya ng mga bacteria. Okay, so that will be for the topic natin ng ating uh, ng, uh, core one. So natapos na natin yung ating core one ng prepare appetizer. Sinama na natin yung keso. Bonus na lecture na natin yan. And now we will proceed to... Okay, we will now proceed to our next... Okay, next ano po tayo? Next topic natin. Core four. Okay, prepare salad. Ayan. So another core na naman po tayo. Okay, so kasi actually ang canopy appetizers or salad are connected. Kasi kung ano po yung ginagamit na spread sa sandwich or kaya sa salad or sa canopy or sa salad, uh, uh, sa, 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 sa canopy or sandwich are the same dressing na rin ang ginagamit natin for the salad. Okay, now we will understand about the salad. So medyo marami na naman tayong slide dito. Okay, mga kapatid sa so pananampalataya. So sana po ay inyo, uh, kaya pa po natin. Okay, so historical development and current trends of salad and salad dressing. Okay, so ang gumagawa po okay, ng mga salad and salad dressing is in the position of guard monhey. Okay, guard monhey. We sabihin, these are the people who prepares vegetables or easy to prepare foods or pantry foods. We have the salads and salad dressing and the sandwiches. Okay, the salad dressings are liquid 
or semi-liquid used to flavor the salad. They are uh, sometimes considered as cold sauces and they serve some uh, serve the same function as the sauces that is the that is they flavor moisten and enrich okay the dressings okay most of the basic salad dressings that we use today okay are divided in two different categories we have three the number one is the oil and vinegar dressing which is what you call vinaigrette and we have here the mayonnaise based dressing and the other one is the coke dressing similar appearance with the mayonnaise dressing which is the holland day okay next Okay, so uh, how do we prepare this kind of oil and vinegar dressing? The number one is we need to identify what are the different oil that we can use in creating a, a, a dressing. Okay, number one, we have here the oil. We have the corn oil, came from corn. <laughs> okay, kaya nga tawag siyang corn oil. We have here the cotton seed oil. Okay, same thing siya with soybean, canola, sunflower oil are bland and nearly tasteless oil. Okay, so that's what we call uh, cotton seed. Ang um, kami yung ginagamit sa competition, sunflower. Medyo may kamahalan po kasi yung sunflower. Ang isang litro ng sunflower, nagkakalaga po siya ng 200 to 500 pesos ang per liter ng, sun, ng, ano, ng sunflower pala. Hindi pala sunflower. O di ba? Nagmamaganda na naman ako. Eh, sunflower oil po is same po. Ang kagandahan nga lang ng sunflower oil, canola oil, or cotton seed oil, ito yung mga oil na kayang uh, hindi ma-burn sa high temperature. Kaya di ba maraming sa mga restaurants po, ang binibili po nila dyan is canola oil. Kasi ang mga deep fryer nila dyan is mataas yung temperature. So para hindi siya ma-burn, magsabing ma-burn, mangitim, okay, yung tinutukoy na burn, mangitim yung oil, Okay, so ginagamit mo na dyan is canola oil. Okay? Kaya kahit kayo din po, para, para hindi, para hindi mangitim agad yung mantika. Yung mga process oil na binibili natin sa palengke, ano po yan? Mga recycled oil na po yan. Kaya maging maingat po kayo sa mga mantikang binibili nyo, lalo yung mga nasa bote ng gin. Okay, nasa bote ng ano? Yung nasa bote ng, tama, bote ng gin lang naman yung naalala ko. Ayan, mga litro, mga plastic-plastic na bote ng mantika. Maging ma mapanuri po kayo dyan kung anong klaseng oil yan. Kasi ngayon kasi sa sobrang dami ng mga oil wastage natin, yung ibang mga mantika, nire-recycle na lang nila yan, nire-process na lang nila yan para maging uh, oil. Lalo po yung mga mantika, hindi ka naman po sinasabing lahat, no? Meron po mga mantika ang ginagamit, yung mga used oil na, used oil, Okay, na ginagamit ng mga mumurahing mga chicken uh, wings or chicken ano na nakikita niyo sa street, sa street, mga street vendor. Okay, ilalayo yung mga mantika ang ginagamit nila. Those are what's called used oil. Anong problema kapag kumain tayo ng mga mantika na ginamit na? Mas mataas po yung tinatawag nating trans fat at saka yung saturated fat. Ang trans fat po, these are the fat that transferred, okay, the from the oil going to the food that's what you call transferred uh, trans trans tama, trans fat or transferred fat pag sinabi naman pong saturated fats these are the fats are being created through the heating process so yung saturated fat na yon na galing sa used oil lilipat ngayon sa pagkain na walang fat so tendency makakain mo yung mantika Okay, yun po yung makikita niyo sa mga nutrition facts na mga trans fats sa saturated fats. These are the fats that created from the process or cooking process of these different ingredients or or this kind of food. Okay? So ganun po ang ano, yun po yung yun po yung tinatawag nating trans fats, trans fat or kaya saturated fats. Kapag nakita niyo sa nutrition facts, oh mataas yung trans fats. A uh, trans fat, ibig sabihin madami yung mantikang na transfer sa pagkain. O mataas yung saturated fats. E, ibig sabihin, mataas, o ibig sabihin yung ginamit nila, used oil na. <laughs> okay? So that's a simple explanation for our, our oil natin. Okay? The he most healthiest oil that we can use is the olive oil. Okay? But this is so expensive. Kasi bakit? Ang olive oil po kasi, 
kahit lutuin mo na, kahit lutuin po natin yan, hindi yan buna bubuo. So, ibig sabihin, kapag kinunsum natin sa katawan natin yan, hindi siya magiging visceral fats. Hindi po siya makakatulong sa pagbibuild up ng uh, mga blocks, mga fats blocks ng katawan natin. It will go directly to our digestive system. Kaya mahal po ang olive oil. Okay? Kaya ganun po siya kamahal. Okay? So, kasi that is the most healthiest oil that ever exists here in the whole world. Okay, kaya lang may ibang mga olive oil kasi. Ah, yes po, Miss Dayan. Sir, Dayan? lahat po pika na tutulog? Ay, lahat. Okay, magandang question yan. Okay, lahat po ba ng mantika ay natutulog? The answer is no. Ang mga mantika lang po na mga natutulog, those are what you call animal fats. Ibig sabihin, these are... Uh, uh, fats or oil came from an animal. Okay? Na kung saan uh, na-dissolve ang mantika through the heat process at kapag once na lumamig na yung mantika, namumuo. So kung meron po kayo nakitang vegetable oil okay, na namuo, means either the process is wrong or meron na siyang kasamang animal fats. Kasi animal fats lang po ang namumuo na mantika. Okay na po ba, Miss Nian? <laughs> Kaya pag mamantika, yung mga namumuo yan. Di ba kasi kagaya nung ano, I don't know if you saw this kind of mantika na ang tatak niya is spring. Tama ba? Spring. Meron siyang nasa sa shay, yes. meron din siyang nasa yes, bote ng gin. Tama ba? Di ba, Mang Maylin? Yes, Nasa uh, spring po ata tatak nun. Tapos parang medyo, alam ko sa pure gold po ata nakita yun. Eh lumamig yung pure gold. Malamig yung pure gold. Natulog din yung mga mantika. <laughs> alam niya na kapag natulog yung mantika, mas marami siyang animal fats. Or kaya mali yung process ng pag-create ng mantika. Or pag-extract ng oil. Yes, Ma'am Juliet. Sir, di ba yung olive oil may ibibaw din klase? Meron kasi yung virgin coconut oil. Meron pang isang olive may isa yun na virgin oil. Ano? olive oil. Ano difference na? Okay. Ma'am, yung olive oil po kasi is came from the olive fruit. Okay? From the fig tree. <laughs> Ayan. So, yung, uh, no, 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 it's different pala. So, not, not, in, not, not in the fig tree. Ang olive oil po kasi is from the olives. So, it's a type of vegetable. Okay? Ang coconut oil is a kind of oil made out of the extraction or made out of heating the coconut milk and you create the coconut oil, which is you can have the virgin. Bakit po ba siya naging virgin? Pag sinabi natin virgin is natanggal po yung coconut oil smell. Yun po yung ano, yun po yung uh, nangyari doon kung bakit po siya naging virgin. Okay, natanggal po yung smell. Okay, kasi kapag ang coconut oil po kasi pina pinainitan natin yan at nag-curl po yung mga uh, coconut oil, lumabas na yung pinakamantika, amoy buko po yan or amoy niyog. So para ma-remove siya, so they go with the other the other go of the another process of removing, okay, this what you call the smell of the coconut, kaya lumabas po yung virgin coconut oil. Ayan, so, so pag sinabing virgin po kasi hindi yun. mabaho. Nag-gets so, nyo. Same with, olive, same with olive oil yun, sir. Ganun ah, din. Olive oil, uh, olive oil po kasi may, may iba't ibang process, may iba't ibang klase pa ng olive oil. Actually, ang yeah. olive oil is the same. Kaya lang, through the other derivatives of uh, different company ng oil, di ba meron kayo makikita na pom, merong pom, pom against, 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 pom Yes po. Yung yung nabibili po sa sa mga uh, tao dito sa mga grocery po na yung nag nagbubuo po yung mantika. Hindi po ba yun suggested para sa mga yung mga matataba po para iluto, ano yung mga, mga baboy ganun. Okay. So depende sa intention kasi ng pagkain. Okay, kung ang kung ang bibili mo mantika, gusto mo makamura ka kasi nagbebenta ka ng pagkain using that oil. Okay, you can use that. Okay, kasi negosyo yan eh. We need to save money. Okay, we need to save money. But 
for the personal consumption of individual, especially your, you want to protect your family, do not use that oil. Kasi alam nyo na, kapag namungo yung mantika, ibig sabihin lumamig. Okay? Kasi ang, ang, ang oil po natin, alam nyo, ito, ito yung worry ko kasi sa mga, ano, sa mga animal fats. Okay? Ang animal fats po kasi, uh, naluto, for example, taba ng baboy, no? Let's, let's, let's go with the practical way. Yung taba ng baboy, nagkatay kayo ng baboy, tas maraming taba, o kaya sa palengke, bumili kayo ng mga taba ng baboy, and then you poke it. And then meron siyang uh, lumabas yung mantika. Okay? Lumabas po yung extraction ng mantika ng taba ng baboy kasi meron kang kailangan na temperature for about 145 to 270 degree Fahrenheit na temperature which is for about 70 ah, six, tama, 70 degree Celsius to 220 degree Celsius. So ibig sabihin, ganun kataas na temperatura ang kailangan mo para lang matunaw itong sinasabing animal fats. And that's the problem with us. Ang body temperature lang natin is about 36 to 38 kung may 38, may lagnat ka na. Okay, kung 36 to 37 degrees Celsius na katawan lang natin. Imagine, kailangan matunaw ang taba for about 60 degree. Sige, doon na natin lagay na 60 degree. Kita niyo yung difference, almost 30 degree ang, ang temperature. So, ibig sabihin, kapag kinonsume natin itong tinatawag nating animal fat, hindi siya madedissolve or madidilute sa katawan natin. Kaya marami pong mga tao nagkakaroon ng cholesterol or may high cholesterol or kaya hina-high blood kasi yung mga fats or mga animal fat na kinakain nila hindi na dadigest ng kanilang katawan at napupunta sa mga bloodstream. Kaya minsan may inaatake sa puso, merong hindi makahinga, merong hina-high blood It's because of these kinds of fat na hindi kayang i-dilute ng ating katawan. Ngayon, pagdating po sa mga type ng vegetable na bibili natin sa supermarket at nakita niyo nilamig yan at nanigas yang mantika na yan, that's the one way to check the quality of the oil. Dapat hindi po siya agad-agad na mumuo. Okay? Kasi pag namuo po siya, uh, pag namuo po siya, alam niyo na. Okay, meron siyang halo or mali yung process. Okay, mali yung process ng paggawa ng oil, pag-extract ng oil. Okay, yun lang naman po yung mga, uh, mga warnings or mga precautions natin sa pamimili ng ating mga mantika. Okay, especially for our own safety or uh, ano natin. Uh, lalo pag yung gagamitin nating mantika is gagamitin sa mayonnaise, sa kusina, uh, sa, sa inyong bahay, gago, after yung mag-training dito, gagawa kayo ng sarili yung mantika, uh, mayonnaise. Do not use uh, ano, ah, the, may, the mantika na nandiyan sa palengke kasi una, iba yung lasa niya. Okay, magiging parang lasang ano po siya, lasang bakal or whatever. The second is yung fat content. Okay, na nakikita na yung ayon, hindi siya agad-agad na didilute ng katawan natin. Mataas po yung kanyang trans fat or saturated fats. Okay, kaya mapapansin niyo po dito kapag makikita niyo sa Kusina natin, magagamit, makikita niyo po dyan mga vegetable oil po ang ginagamit natin. Para at least, magwala man tayong olive oil, at least kahit pa paano, safe po yung ating uh, pagkain na kinakain. Okay, so vegetable po is the highly suggested kung hindi niyo po kaya ng olive oil. Okay, so yun lang naman po. Any questions pa po? And we will proceed to our uh, uh, quality factors okay of the oil. <laughs> Okay, we have here what you call the all-purpose oil. All-purpose oil is an oil used for dressing should have mild and sweet flavor. Strongly flavored oils can uh, can make excellent salad dressing but not inappropriate in every food. For example, we use the uh, strong oil. Ano bang strong oil natin din sa mga klase ng olive oil o kaya peanut oil o kaya walnut oil. These are kind of oil that has taste. Okay. Uh, of their fruit. For example, peanut oil. Lasang peanut po yan. Okay? It's a good, uh, strong flavor. Can make an excellent salad dressing. Pero, hindi siya babagay sa lahat ng, ano, sa lahat ng salad na pwede natin paggamitan. Okay? For example, we need, we will create a wild dog salad. Wild dog salad is a basic mayonnaise, celery, apples, and walnuts. Okay? So, hindi pa natin pwede gamitin doon yung Uh, mayonnaise na galing sa peanut oil kasi mag, magka-contrast po yung celery at saka yung 
ano, uh, apples doon sa peanut oil. Kasi hindi po pwede pagsamahin ng apple sa ka-peanut. Pwede pa banana sa ka-peanut. Pwede. Excuse me. Excuse me po. <laughs> wait lang po, wait lang po. Okay, so that will be for our all-purpose oil. Okay, so next natin is winterized. Okay, winterized oil. So uh, this oil should be used in dressing that are be that can be refrigerated. Okay, this oil has been treated for the remaining for the remain clear liquid when chilled. <laughs> okay. Okay, pag sinabi natin winterized oil, these are all being processed na bago natin siya i-consume. Okay, they try this kind of oil na i-chill or kaya ilagay sa ref or ilagay sa refrigerator. Kasi sinacheck nila whether this oil, okay, is uh, pag nabuo ba siya, clear pa rin ba siya or parang oil pa rin ba siya or hindi. Meron pong ganyan mga klaseng mantika. Medyo may kamahalan na po itong winterized oil kasi these are all being tested, okay? Before they sell into the market. Okay? Next, aside sa oil na meron po tayo na paggamitin natin sa dressing natin ng salad, is we have also the vinegar. Okay, we have here the kinds of vinegar. We have here the cider vinegar, which is a uh, an vinegar made out of apples. And we have here the white or distilled vinegar. These are uh, distilled vinegar and purified so that uh, it has a neutral flavor. Ito po yung nakikita niyong mga transparent okay, na vinegar okay, sa supermarket. We have here the wine vinegar. Okay, wine vinegar naman po, it is a kind of vinegar out of grapes naman po siya. We have here additional flavor. Uh, we, have, uh, we have here another flavored vinegars. Okay, flavored vinegars, these are vinegars okay, that add a different kind of vegetables like ginger, garlic, uh, uh, onions, peppercorns, chili. Yan, ang tawag dyan mga flavored vinegars. Yung sukang pinakurat, ang tawag dyan is flavored or nandun siya sa under na, ng type ng flavored vinegars. We have here another sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar is... Again, same na naman siya na parehas ng uh, wine vinegar na galing sa grapes. Kaya lang itong sherry kasi mas mataas yung kanyang fermentation process compared sa wine vinegar lang. Okay, so made out of sherry wine. Okay, consequently it has a distinctive flavor of the of the of the wine. The next one is the balsamic vinegar. Ito yung pinakagusto ko sa lahat pero mabaho po ito. Balsamic vinegar is a special wine vinegar aged in wooden barrels okay, or sidebar. And it's dark brown color. It has not noticeably sweet taste. Ayan. Pero lasang vinegar pero matamis at kulay itim po itong balsamic vinegar. This is the most uh, pinakagusto ko po yung balsamic vinegar. Okay. Next po. Okay, so another, okay, dahil alam natin yung mga ibang mga vinegar natin, we go tayo with the quality factors, okay? The quality factors of, uh, of our vinegar, okay, will give a uh, good and uh, a balance, okay, taste for our salad, okay? Depends on the strength of acidity, okay? Pag, sinabi sa, pag sinasabi po natin strength of acidity, it is the amount, of the acid or yung asim na tinutupay natin na pwede natin ay consume or uh, isama sa ating mga vegetable natin sa salad natin. Siyempre, the stronger the acidity, okay, it will easily cook our vegetable or fresh fresh vegetables. Okay? The, the lower Okay, the acidity, okay, ito yung mas ma, mas madali natin i-consume. Pero hahanapin mo yung asin. Okay? 
So, mayroon tayong mga alternative. Kung wala tayong vinegar, mayroon tayong uh, alternative for a uh, vinegar, which is high in acidity. Number one, the, uh, the lemon juice. Ayan. Lemon juice can be placed okay, kung wala kang vinegar. Okay, lime juice. Ano po yung lime juice? Ito po yung lemon na kulay green. Lime juice. Or kaya calamansi. O kaya dayap. Dayap pa tawag doon sa term na yun. Okay, the other is, uh, ano tawag mo ito? Mga maasim. Ayan, maasim na ano, calamansi, lemon. Uh, yeah, that's that could be an alter, alter, okay, alternative for the vinegar. Especially kapag may mga taong ayaw ng vinegar. So the, the the choice is you can use the lemon. Okay. To alter okay, the vinegar. Fresh to ah. Fresh juice po siya. Hindi po siya yung smart scene na nakikita nyo ito sa lagay ng salad. Kasi yun matamis na yun. Okay. Process na yun. Ito yung fresh juice na pwede natin i-extract. Ano pa? Mango juice. Yung mga ripe mango juice. Pwede natin yung gamitin na sa salad dressing natin. Kasi medyo maasin po yan. Okay. Ano pa? Uh, grapes, yung sabaw ng grapes, pwede natin yung gamitin na sa alternative. Kaya lang, hindi siya ganun kaasin. Okay, tamarind. Yan, pwede po yan. Okay, tamarind extract. Ano pa ba? Uh, na maasin. Tomatoes. Yan, so pwede po yan. Okay, next natin is after we know the vinegar, the oil, and now let's proceed to the basic or the foundation of the mayonnaise, the egg yolk. Okay, egg yolk is essential ingredients in the mayonnaise. In uh, it is a uh, uh, ano yun? help to emulsify the dressing. Okay, kasi kapag once na magkasama yung egg yolk, lemon or kaya egg yolk, uh, lemon and oil, okay, yun yung uh, ingredients para makagawa tayo ng mayonnaise. So for safety, kagaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, you need to pasteurize the egg yolk. Okay, pasteurized means to cook in a specific temperature in order to kill the bacteria. Okay, next we proceed with the seasonings and flavorings. Okay, seasonings and flavorings, those are herbs and spice. So, syempre, magkalagay din tayo ng mga herbs and spice sa ating uh, dressing natin like pepper, salt, okay, rosemary, thyme. Cilantro. Ayan. So, sasama natin yan sa mga seasoning or flavorings natin. Okay? So, next natin is, let's, let's first define the emulsion. Okay? Emulsion, emulsion in salad, okay, it is a mixture or mixing. Okay? Emulsion is a term for mixing. A two kind of liquid that cannot be mixed. <laughs> for example, oil and vinegar. Okay, through the emulsion process kasi, it will uh, coagulate the air okay, that, that needs to combine in the other ingredients. For example, uh, vinegar and oil. So through the emulsion process, you need to blend it or you need to whisk it or you want to shake it okay, uh, para mag-blend. Okay, hindi siya totally mag magsasama. Hindi siya totally mag, uh, magko-combine. Ang ang, ang Pag sinabi natin emulsify is magkaroon lang siya ng mga air spaces between the two types of liquid. Okay? For example, sa oil, nga, oil and vinegar nga, magkaroon lang sila ng, ano, ng uh, air spaces para maging ano po sila, mag, magkakadikit lang po sila. Pero it doesn't mean they, they will blend to each other but they are uh, tight. Okay? Parang tinatali mo lang yung dalawang uh, ingredient natin. the vinegar and the oil. This is the emulsion process. Okay? So we have here the two unmixable liquids, okay, called the emulsion. Okay? But kapag yung two mixable ingredients na then or liquids, nagsama-sama siya, ang tawag dyan is suspension. Okay? Kagaya, for example, na ang, ang oil po at saka ang egg yolk are the same fats. Okay? May fat content po yan. So, Through mixing this egg yolk and uh, oil, ang tawag naman dyan dyan is suspension. But they are under the process of emulsion. Okay? Emulsion is a process of mixing two liquid ingredients. Okay? Next. Sa emulsion, meron tayong tinatawag ng temporary emulsion. Pag sabi ng temporary emulsion, we mix it, okay, for a short period of time. For example, uh, 
uh, this one is the oil oil and uh, vinegar. We shake it. Okay, then we pour it into the salad. Ang tawag doon is temporary emulsion. Okay, we have the next one is the permanent emulsion. Ito yung pagsasama ng dalawang liquid at hindi na siya mapapaghiwalay. Sana all hindi pinaghiwalay. Okay, char. <laughs> Again, this is what you call uh, the creation of mayonnaise natin. Okay, we mix the egg yolk and then the oil. Okay, para mag uh, para mag blend sila. Okay, and then uh, maging permanent na silang magkasama. Okay, okay. Next po. Okay, we go tayo with the salad. Okay, so I think uh, we have. Uh, kaya pa ba? Oh, kaya pa ba? Ako tanongin niyo kung kaya ko pa. <laughs> yes, sir. Kaya. Ayun, sir. Pag ko na hindi na kaya. Okay. We will proceed na lang po tomorrow as ah, ano sa Monday. Okay? So we will have this we will end this uh uh discussion to the permanent emulsion and then we will proceed to another uh topic na uh, we will continue okay the topic natin sa salad. Okay, hanggang matapos natin yung salad and dressings. Okay, then we will proceed tayo sa core 4. which is preparation of sandwich tomorrow. Ah, sa Monday. Okay, so okay po ba yan, class, uh, scholars? Okay lang, sir. Okay, so okay thank you so much for, for listening to me and nagkaroon tayo ng magandang conversation kanina. Okay, for some questions. So, uh, okay na po. Uh, kita kis po tayo tomorrow. I will open now the new LMS of your core 2, which is the appetizer. And then I will open some of the activities for the salad. And then the deadline po nun is sa Monday. Ayan, for those who have problems still na niyo, pakichat na lang po kami sa JC. Okay, so wala na po bang tanong? Wala na pong tanong? <laughs> Ayan, i-serve po yung tanong sana sa Monday. Yung mga ano, yung lecture po kahapon. Ay, yes po, isa-send po po mamaya. After po ng, after ng converting this uh, Zoom meeting natin ngayon, sa-send natin, sa-send po later yung ating lecturer yesterday. Salamat po and always ingat and uh, stay safe. Okay? Always remember that you are loved, accepted, and valid. Bye! See you on Monday, class. Yes, Thank you po. Wait lang po! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Nakalimutan ko pala. Ano? Picture! Picture! Ay, wait lang, chat natin sila. Baka mamay yung malisa sila. Wait yes, lang. sir. Yun ang i-remind ko nga sa'yo yung picture, but wala. Wait lang yung picture. Biglang takbo. Ulit mo. Uh-oh. Take to tayo. Okay, picture po tayo. Okay. Ayan. Ayan. So, smile po tayo in 3, 2, 1, smile. Okay, one more po ulit tayo. One more. Send ko lang po sa JC yung picture. Hindi pa mga sweet yun. Eh? Excited talagang lumabas ng classroom. No? <laughs> Char. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay, isa pa akong picture. In 3, 2, 1, smile. Okay, so thank you po ulit. Ayan, so pwede na po kayo mag-live sa ating Zoom. Bye, see you on Monday. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you.